Hey guys, welcome back, or if it's your first time here, welcome to my channel. Now today, we are gonna be doing a very, very, very highly requested video. It's very different from any other video that I've ever done on my channel, and I basically decided that I'm going to be starting a YouTuber series. I really wanted to create a series of videos that just helps um, people who want to get into the YouTube community, who wants to start making videos, and to sort of guide them in the right direction, because I know when I first started out, I had no idea what I was doing, like absolutely no idea. And I feel like throughout the three years that I've been on YouTube, because I feel like I have learned quite a lot. Today's video is really all going to be about tech. So all the actual physical equipment that you need to start a YouTube channel. I'm gonna be talking about lighting, cameras, microphones. So I really hope you guys find this helpful. If you're starting a YouTube channel, I really hope that this sort of motivates you to get started. Or if you don't even wanna start a YouTube channel, maybe this could just be a cool look inside what goes into making a YouTube video. Do not forget to give it a big thumbs up if you are excited about this series. And of course, leave me all of your thoughts in the comments. Let me know what you would like to see in future episodes. And of course, subscribe if you would like to be notified every time I upload a new video, which is every Monday and Thursday at 8.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We got a lot of stuff to talk about, a lot of stuff to cover, so let's get right into it. So the first topic that we're gonna cover today is lighting, because I do think that lighting is probably the most important thing when it comes to shooting a video. So first, let's go through my actual setup, and then we will talk a little bit about the difference between natural lighting and studio lighting, and I'll talk about some alternatives as well. So I have two lights that I use that sit behind a reflector. One is a Diva Kino Flow and the other is a Lumahawk LED. Now in an ideal world, I would have two of the same lights. I would either have two Lumahawks or two Kino Flows, but honestly, it works just fine like this. Basically the whole idea is to get as much light as possible behind this reflector. You really do want a lot of light. This LED that I have is so extremely strong and I have it at 100% because I actually put a reflector directly in front of these lights and that diffuses the light and by diffusing in the light it also cuts down the intensity of it so you sort of want to compensate with a really strong light so that's why I do have two and not just one now like I said the reason why I have a reflector in front of these lights is to completely diffuse it you do not want these lights to be on you especially on full blast because it's going to be very harsh and that harshness is going to create a lot of weird hard shadows which is definitely not what you want especially for beauty videos you really want the light to be nice and soft and diffuse and a reflector will do just that you will also notice that the lights are not pointed directly at my face they are sitting a little bit higher than me and pointed down slightly and then of course the reflector is also tilted as well I'm actually going to show you guys what it looks like without the reflector so that you could see the difference okay so this is what it looks like without the reflector as you can see the light is extremely harsh it's extremely bright I can't even open up my eyes and you could see the huge difference that the reflector actually makes so those are all of the lights that I use except for the one that is sitting right above me which I will touch on in a second before we talk about that I do want to talk about the silver reflector that is sitting on the table in front of me this is very important because the light is coming down slightly on an angle it has the tendency to create a little bit of a harder shadow underneath the chin this will basically reflect light underneath my chin so I don't need to have like another light sitting underneath me to fill in the shadows this is without the reflector and this is with it. So you can see right away the difference that it makes. It's really not a big deal if you don't have this, but you can see it definitely creates a more uniform effect when this is actually laid down. So something else that I wanted to discuss are the two whiteboards. They're basically, um, what are they even called? Foam boards? They're foam boards that are sitting um, right next to me. So these are also great for bouncing light to your face. By just putting these foam boards right next to me, the light is going to bounce off of these and hit my face and it's going to give a very soft effect without the use of another light. So they're so cheap. You could get them at any like office supply store for a few bucks and I basically just clamp them onto my table from the bottom. They're not the most sturdy. They fall all the time, honestly, but they work. And then right above me, I have another light. Now this isn't totally necessary at all. This is really just because, again, I'm a little bit crazy when it comes to lighting and I really wanted my background to be as bright as possible. I do have this little remote here that turns this light on and off. 
this is what it looks like without that light on. So you can see it's definitely a lot darker. This isn't a bad look, but I didn't want so much of a contrast between me and my background. So that's why I got this light to light it up evenly. So now I'm going to talk a little bit about natural lighting because I do get a lot of questions about that. Now, I basically only use natural lighting when I first started my channel for probably the first year and a half. And then I moved into my new house and I use basically a mix of natural lighting and studio lighting. And now I just use studio lighting and this is definitely my favorite way to film my videos and I will sort of explain why that is. Firstly, the pros for natural lighting, of course, is that it's free. I mean, you don't have to buy natural light. If you have a nice big window that you could sit in front of, great. Um, another great thing about natural lighting is that if you film at the right time of day, if it's not too bright, not too cloudy, you just get the sun right at the right place, it looks beautiful. And I feel like if you're just starting out on YouTube, using just natural light honestly is a nice option. If you have the ability to do that, if you have a window that you could sit in front of, that's great. I have sort of have a big like love-hate relationship with the natural light because although it could look so beautiful, it could also be such a pain in the ass just because of how inconsistent it is. You could be filming, a cloud could pass by, your lighting is gone like that and then the cloud could leave and then it's really really bright and then it's a little bit darker and then it's a little bit brighter so that just creates a little bit of inconsistency with the lighting in a video whereas when I film with just studio lights I could film at like midnight and nobody would know any different now I know that I'm going to get a lot of questions about ring lights so I do sort of want to touch on those very quickly it's sort of like a very popular light in the beauty community and I do know that you guys are probably very curious about what I think of them if you're not familiar with what a ring light is by the way it's basically just like a circular tube and there's like a hole in the middle so it sort of just lights up your face very evenly I feel like if you're just starting out just getting a ring light is honestly a really great option because you will light up your face nice and evenly and they are fairly affordable when it comes to lighting. So that's it for lighting for now. I do have some questions in my Q&A that have to do with lighting, which I will touch on a little bit later. But for now, let's move on to the other aspects of filming. Let's talk about cameras. So I started off my YouTube channel by using a really cheap camcorder that I bought from Best Buy. It was like 200 bucks and for a camera that is fairly inexpensive. And then I ended up upgrading to a DSLR and I really haven't looked back since. I've definitely upgraded my DSLR over the years and I currently have a Canon ADD. DSLRs are personally what I like to film with. It's sort of what I prefer. So if I had one camera that I could suggest to you guys, um, if you're just starting out your channel, I would suggest the Canon 70D. I think it is an amazing camera. It's really great to film with. It has a flip out screen so you are able to actually see um, what you look like when you're filming. It also has autofocus, which is literally a lifesaver. Another really great thing about Canon cameras is that they actually come with software. It's called the EOS Utility, and this actually allows you to see what you are filming on your computer. So if you have a laptop, you could place it in front of you, plug your camera into your computer, and then you could actually control your camera from your laptop, which is honestly so helpful, especially when you're taking like thumbnail photos, you can control it from your laptop instead of like reaching over and uh, using the shutter button on your camera. And it also allows you to control the ISO aperture, all that stuff right from your laptop. Now, if you're just starting out and you don't want to invest in a more expensive camera, that's totally cool. There are so many amazing cameras out there that are way less expensive. We live in a great time right now where technology is just so advanced that even smaller, less expensive cameras still have really great video capabilities. I will leave some less expensive camera suggestions in the description box down below because I definitely cannot think of them off the top of my head. So now let's talk about lenses because I personally think the lens is even more important than the camera body. Lenses really do make a difference in the quality of the video. One lens will completely change the look compared to a another lens. The lens that I use is the Canon zoom lens. It's the EF 24 to 70 millimeter. Now this is definitely a more expensive lens. There are so many other lenses out there that are also really wonderful that are way less expensive. Again, I will put some alternatives in the description box down below. Um, just generally speaking though, I would recommend getting a zoom lens, especially when you're doing tutorials. It is way easier to sort of like get in close to your face. Instead of moving yourself closer to the camera, you could just zoom in. I get asked all the time like what camera settings do I use camera settings mostly depends on like where you're shooting the lights that you have how bright your lights are so it's difficult for me to tell you exactly what your ISO aperture and f-stop should be but for me personally I always shoot a manual I never shoot in automatic because when you shoot in automatic it will basically change the settings as you're shooting which can create a lot of inconsistency throughout the video and whereas if you shoot in manual the settings will stay the same throughout the whole time that you're filming I definitely encourage you to do 
some research on your own so that you yourself have a better understanding of camera settings because I feel like sort of just changing numbers without really knowing what they mean could really affect the quality of your videos. So now let's talk about sound and microphone. So sound is definitely a very important aspect of a video because you obviously want people to be able to hear you. Now if you are on a budget and you do not want to buy an external microphone, that is totally okay. Most cameras do actually have microphones built into them. However, I would recommend not going too far from your camera, otherwise it will create a little bit too much of an echo. And you also want to make sure that if you are filming with the mic that's coming from your camera that you do not use autofocus because you will actually hear the camera focusing which could be a little bit distracting now the mic that I use is actually a lapel mic so you may be able to see it right over here it is attached right to my shirt and this is a audio technica lapel mic this is definitely again more of an expensive microphone but there are some really awesome very affordable microphones like the on-camera road mics again links will be in the description box those work fabulously now of course once you film your video then it's time to edit it and editing software is another important equipment that you definitely need in your life if you are a youtuber now I personally use Final Cut Pro I do really love Final Cut because it just allows me a lot of flexibility when it comes to editing if you are just starting out then a free program like Windows Movie Maker or iMovie is honestly perfect you do not need to invest into a more expensive program like Final Cut or Adobe Premiere or Apple after effects or whatever um, you really could use whatever comes with your computer and that will work fine so now I'm gonna go on to the Twitter questions that you guys sent me so Angie asked camera lenses for different types of photos ie product shots close-up makeups and selfies I personally do not think you need more than one lens I use the same lens for the pictures that I take on Instagram and I use the same lens for the videos that I film so I think that if you get one really awesome lens you do not need to get anything else Danielle asked what do you consider more important camera or lens lighting and where should one splurge if they can only splurge in one area honestly I really feel like lighting is more important I think you can have a mid-range camera you don't need to have the best camera in the world but if your lighting is on point then it will just make the overall quality of the video look great whereas you could have the most amazing camera in the world but if your lighting is not quite right the video quality just won't be as good as it should be so Ellie asked um, what did you do before having such a high quality space supplies how did you make it work I just made it work like I said I literally had zero lights and I just filmed in front of a window and I basically just scheduled my videos when I thought that the lighting would be best and I also used to film in my bedroom up until literally a month ago so space was always an issue but I always just made it work I just sort of made my lights fit no matter what and I think that sort of just trying things out and seeing what works is the best way to do it there really isn't one answer it's really all trial and error unfortunately um, that's just sort of the nature of the game so somebody asked me what would a YouTube starter pack like consist of so if you're just starting out and you didn't want to get like the full shebang like everything that I have over here you really just wanted the essentials what I would recommend is to get a camera depending on your budget like I said the best camera that I would recommend is definitely the Canon 70D I would also of course recommend getting a tripod unless you are able to like prop your camera up on a stack of books then you may not even need a tripod and then for lighting I would suggest just getting a ring light I think a ring light is a really great option especially if you're first starting out it will light up your face evenly and that's really all you truly need so I think a tripod a camera and a ring light is the perfect starter YouTube starter kit so that is basically it I feel like I've spoken a lot throughout this video and I really hope that it was helpful for you guys I also hope that I covered the majority of what needed to be covered of course there will be other episodes in the series which will be going more in depth for different things so I really hope that you guys found this video helpful of course leave any questions that you have in the comments down below and I will try and answer as many as I possibly can and definitely leave me suggestions for the next video for the series give this video a big thumbs up if this helped you out and you enjoyed it and of course subscribe if you're not subscribed already and I will see you guys next time bye